Welcome back to Port Shepson and Desi's Raceway. Some really cool wildlife around and the wild action is about to continue for the big crowd that's come out. Speaking of wildlife, well, there you go. Jake Goodsight will definitely be in action in the South African Superbike Championship. These are the fastest riders in the country and they are certainly looking forward to joining the Extreme Festival now as part and parcel of the National Championship Tour. It's great to have them back in the paddock and there's going to be some superb action amongst these riders. Running the series is Brad Anassas. Let's find out for him all the information about the new championship. We've got a three-tire maximum usage for the weekend. Um, that's one of the big uh, caps of uh, bringing the cost down. There's a whole lot of new partners back on board. Uh, it's proud for us to bring uh, people like Suto, who's an international clutch brand. We've got BST, the world's most famous carbon fiber wheel, built right here in Johannesburg. We have uh, I2M, which is a Badger product uh, imported from Italy. So nice to have uh, some new brands come along on the journey with us and uh, showcase their products to the riders and hopefully the riders can absorb international quality products and go faster. Riders are ready to go. There's no doubt they want to go fast, Brad, that's for sure. And we're going to start things out with the 600cc championship. Blaze Baker with the number one plate. Certainly going to be a man to watch out for down here, being a banana boy. But of course, Malcolm Rudman is the man who has put it on pole. And his arch rival and good mate is certainly fired up and looking for a chance to go and spoil the day for the rest of these riders that are lined up on the grid. Jared Schultz from Cape Town making the front row alongside them, of course. And then we move to the second row, which sees a couple of riders that don't normally make it onto the second row right up there, including Dino Oyotso and Ricardo Otto. Off the line now. Oh, looks like Rudman might have had a little bit of a jump start there. Rudman getting off the line a little bit too hot for my liking as they head down towards turn number one. He gets outgunned, or does he? He goes side by side with Blaze Baker as they go through turn one now. Very, very close to Staffan getting it completely wrong as they went into turn one. So Rudman's already lost out to Baker. Baker runs wide. Oh, and Rudman comes back up his inside as Baker makes a mistake. Jared Schultz waiting to pick up the pieces there right on the tailpiece as they come and flick it through the corkscrew for the first time. He also, but it is a good start coming out of Dion Nelson. Nelson just ahead of Iotso as they came through there. On board now with Ricardo Otto. It's a fantastic shot of this young man. Watch out for him through the season. He's got better and better every time he slings his leg over a motorcycle. And you can see just why he's running in the top six. Coming under braking now. That is a great move there from Schultz. He's trying to go around the outside of the champion. Not holding back here, is he? Jared Schultz certainly getting better and better behind a 600 as well. And we can see some massive improvements coming out of these riders. Baptism of fire here for Tarek Fanamava on the Evolve High Tech Yamaha. He's fighting there with uh, Luca Bologna and Staffan, who's got to try and make some maneuvers. Good ride there. A couple of guys have gone for a bit of a weird choice here, but it was because of the conditions. The rain stopped just before the first heat. So a couple of guys might be on uh, the normal road tires that they run. Some might have gone with wet weather options. Let's see how that uh, pans out in this first heat. Luca Bologna now starting to close in on the back second pack there, which Ricardo Otto leads out. And in there, you've got Staffan, Aiden Liebenberg, and of course, watch out for Kuhn Sneemann in there as well. Out front though. It is Malcolm Rudman showing that he is the class of the field, particularly at a home track, a track that he spent oodles of time at. Him and Blaze Baker normally fight on 300 cc's here. Now they're fighting on the big 600s for the first time as this national championship comes back down to Desi's Raceway. Expect to see new lap records here as well as they head down the hill. You can see Dion Nelson has found some serious pace here between the practice sessions yesterday in the dry and now in these wet weather conditions or tricky conditions and that's why it's tricky. Oh, that front end just falling away from Nelson. He falls off the circuit completely and he's stuck in a, quite a precarious position. So let's see whether or not the, the clock of the course deems that to be dangerous. Right now, dangerous at this stage is the King Price Yamaha of Dino Oyotso. And incredibly, look at that. Tarek van Amerva on the Evolve High Tech Yamaha is ahead and he's pushing hard to try and get up there and catch the back end. And it's Jared Schultz that he's got his eye set on. Schulte right now sitting in the third spot. This is the battle for three, four, and five as they come through the southern loop and flick it onto the main straight. Rudman is leading things out on a almost 10-year-old motorcycle on the Kawasaki. First of the Yamahas is Blaze Baker, but he's second place on the road. But I think Rudman might be caught out here with a 30-second penalty. So I think Baker might have just got some kind of indication from his pit board to just take it easy and realize there might have been an issue. The four Yamahas fighting for two, three, four on track at this stage. And closing them down, Kuhn Sneemann just behind that. You can see uh, just coming into picture on the back end of these shots. Ricardo Otto not too far off the back of that as well. This is the man they've got to try and catch. And what a ride here from Malcolm Rudman. Other than the mistake he made on the line, he has not put a wheel wrong. That's a great bit of maneuvering there from the Otto. Diving through on Schultze. And it looks like uh, Jared Schultz had to just give that one up. 
And you can see he's just uh, not happy about that. He's going to have to try and fight out as Yotso moves up one position. That'll put him into provisionally probably second place. Sh Schultze will be third. Otto is now dived through for fourth. And Tarek van der Merwe probably for fifth. The flag is out for Rudman. He doesn't know he's going to get penalized. He's taking it as if he's taking the win. And look at the lead he had over Blaise Baker. Baker definitely tapped out of that one and realized there were some issues. And Baker takes the first win of the season with that 30-second penalty being applied. And that drops Malcolm Rudman down to seventh place. It's Yotso in second, Schultze in third, with Otto van der Merwe, Kuhn Snemann and Rudman, with Luca Bologna in eighth place. Yeah, you know, today, this weekend has been, it's been a great weekend. Yesterday, the track was completely different to today. Um, the surface, it was very slippery yesterday, but, you know, today, it was incredible. We, we did a couple of changes on the bike and, well, the bike was immaculate. The second race now, it just worked. Everything worked perfectly. And uh, a huge thank you again to all the guys that have come in, started helping me this season, um, getting me to where I am now. And huge thank you to the crew behind me for all coming out today. A good ride from Baker, taking both heats on the day, sees him at the top of the championship and trying to retain that number one plate. Jared Schultz is second, Yotso's third, with Malcolm Rudman, Ricardo Otto and Kuhn Steinman closing them down. Look out for Tarek van der Merwe and Luca Bologna at the next round, because they're certainly going to be right up there. We move straight into the South African Superbike Championship now, and here is a field of riders that are certainly made up with a whole bunch of South African championships and international championships under their wings. We've got multiple SA champion Clint Seller looking to get that number one plate back. The champion, Michael White, is not here this weekend and may be back for the next round, but that's going to leave David McFadden and Alan John Fenter to go at it, as well as Jade Goodside at the back of the field on a stock standard Fireblade from Honda. Imschlange Honda at the back now gets off the line quite nicely, but it's Clint Seller who's disappeared at the front end. Alan John Fenter looking to try and get through there for second place, but this time he gets squeezed around the outside by McFadden. McFadden just going through. Oh, Lance Isaacs makes a small mistake into turn one here. And it's Clint Seller who leads out, but McFadden this time has moved up into second place ahead of AJ. Alan John Fenter's got Caldenace all over the back of him. A little bit of rain starting to drop here. This will be a concern for the riders. They'll start to see it on their visors. They'll start to see it on their windscreens. Will it keep the pace down? Highly unlikely. On board here with Kinsella on the King Price Insurance Yamaha as he heads down the hill and down towards the dam section. On the brakes. And it's McFadden all over the back of him. Alan John Fenter fending off the rest of this field. Two Yamaha R1s on his tail. Hildenace is one of them. And it looks like a great start there from Dylan Barnard, who's up there. No, in fact, it's Gary Flock. It's Flock who's up there. Barnard was the other yellow Yamaha that's just further back behind Lance Isaacs. The Superbets BMW now all over the back of Flock, trying to find a way past. But it's the Suzuki who's in third place, who's just keeping them all at bay. The two Yamahas getting away from that Suzuki of Alan John Fenter, the lacquer racing man. And he is really looking good at the stage as he flicks it through onto the main straight ahead of those three charging Yamahas. They come across the line and complete the lap. The BMW just behind that of Lance Isaacs. Then it's Barnard. Behind Barnard, Jade Goodsight on the Honda. Byron Best, unfortunately, not making it out here after a high side in practice, but he'll be a man to watch out for coming into the next round. And the high-tech Yamaha would definitely be in this pack and probably fighting not only with these three, but probably with the three up front as they disappear in the wayside. Suzuki versus two Yamahas, and these two R1s are hounding the back of that GSX-R. But it's Seller who's getting away. Speaking of getting away, he set a lap record in the first race. Look at Hildenace trying to dive around the outside of Alan John Fenter. Has he overcooked it? Yes, he has. Couldn't quite get that bike stopped, and Fenter goes straight back at him. They come back to back and side by side as they come onto that short straight towards the damn wall. And is it Fenter? Yes. Alan John has been able to keep him out. Here comes Flock. Flock this time diving on the inside of Hildenace. Oh, he's a big moment. A big moment there for Flock. Nearly stepped the back end of that R1 out. This is a phenomenal battle here for third place between the Suzuki and the two R1s. Isaac's just off the back there on the BMW. And he'll be waiting for that new model in June to arrive and possibly get up there with the pace. Look at, look at the concentration here. Seller means business here. Evil Knievel in the house as always as he breaks for turn one. Oh, a new lap record has just been set. I was saying that Seller set a lap record in race one. Here in race two, it's now McFadden who's taken the lap record as oh, Flock goes down. Just pushing too hard. Goes into turn one and the front wheel just gave away and Garrick Flock is on the sideline and out of this one. Can he get it up and riding again? Shakes his head. He knows he's made a big mistake there. Just pushed it too hard into turn number one and slides off into the kitty litter. That's a big mistake there for him. Oh, the bike rolls over. That's not good. That could be potentially a lot of damage on that old one. Here's an other point of view. Front wheel disappears. Nowhere to go. Slides across the kitty litter and it goes... End over end. Only one time, though, so fortunately, it shouldn't be too much damage. Here comes McFadden, though. He means business. 
He's trying left and right. He's tried every single corner to find a way through there on Seller. This is the final lap. He's got to do it on this one. McFlash and Evil Knievel going at it here for the final time at Daisy's Raceway. What a start to this championship. These two R1s have been on fire. And they're definitely looking like it's going to be a big, big championship rivalry here between the two of them. Both ex-South African champions have both done exactly what they need to do on 600s and 1000s. And now starting this new South African Superbike Championship, it's McFadden who's applying the pressure. He dives to try and find a way through, runs wide. He's going to go for a maneuver here, there's no doubt about it. Looking for a way through, he's gone to the inside! Oh my goodness! There's no way you can make it stick there. What a move, it comes across the line. It's Seller who hangs on after being tagged by McFlash through that final corner. What a start to this championship. That's how South African Superbike Championship Racing should be done. And it's Seller taking the win ahead of McFadden. Alan John Fenton on the Suzuki in third place, beating out Mornach Aldenais and Lance Isaacs on the BMW in fifth. Dylan Barnard beating out Jade Goodsight on the Honda and Gary Flock eventually got back up and finished in eighth. Yeah, I'm really happy with the race overall. It was really good. It's nice to be uh, finally up front now and be able to fight for the win. Uh, I tried in the last corner, but it was just uh, too little, too late. But overall, I'm happy. We at least had the pace and we got a lap record. And for my first race on the Yamaha, I'm happy. Eh? We're there. And from here, I think we can build up for the next race. Um, yeah, I tried really hard in the beginning. I think uh, we broke a bunch of lap records and fastest laps there, which was cool. And uh, yeah, I hung on about four laps to go. I looked back and I saw, I saw a black bike, so I knew it was David. And then uh, I kind of just planned the race from then on. I knew where he was going to have a go and uh, on the last lap, last lap just saved myself for that spot and uh, it's cool you know it was a fun race it's always good to have good competition in the front and I'm glad I managed to win it yeah maximum points for Clint Seller sees him go to the top of the championship standings after this round and it's David McFadden right on his tail Alan John Fenter though sharing the podium there with McFadden and Lance Isaacs on the BMW in fourth place beating out Caldenace and Jay Goodside on his Honda the next round of the championship happens on the 6th of April at SWAT Corps. Make sure it's in your diaries, because you definitely don't want to miss any of the Superbike action this season. All this action is proudly brought to you by Investchem Chemical Logistics, the South African Superbikes and their associate sponsors.